Today we are going to talk about arithmetic codes. So, um, the basic idea of an arithmetic code is um, related to source extension. So we saw in um, the Huffman procedure that we could improve the efficiency of Huffman codes by extending sources. In other words, if we start with a, with a source alphabet that was binary, we saw that um, Huffman codes were especially bad at dealing with the source because um, mapping a binary uh, source alphabet to a binary output alphabet, um, you can always do better than the Huffman code, or excuse me, you can always do better than you can always do equivalently to the Huffman code simply by starting here and assigning one symbol zero and the other symbol one and just basically transmitting the source into clear. Um, so we saw that the idea was to get closer to entropy, what you could do was um, form super sources. Or with three elements. see, um, we showed that as you extend sources, the, uh, the penalty for an optimal code gets smaller and smaller and smaller. However, the, uh, um, the complexity, as you can see, scales exponentially with the number of, uh, uh, with the number of source letters in the extension. So um, here it's two. Here we have to specify a, a code for four uh, equivalents or symbols here for eight, 16, 32, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, so the, again, the, kind of the, uh, the complexity of specifying the Huffman code for these becomes very large. Running the Huffman procedure becomes unwieldy, even though it's a, it is an optimal strategy. We saw last time that the um, Shannon Fano Elias code could be used by picking a source, um, uh, pick, excuse me, picking a code word directly based on the, um, uh, the cumulative distribution function of a, uh, of, a, of a source letter. So let's remind ourselves a little bit about what the Shannon Fano Elias code does. So for example, if I have um, a source X with three letters, actually it's because um, we're talking about the cumulative distribution function, it makes sense to talk about these as uh, integers, not letters. The cumulative distribution function, so I have some probability Px over these, let's say it's um, 3.7, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Um, remember the cumulative distribution function is the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to some specific value of x. This would be, uh, the notation might be hard to see here, but this is capital X representing the random variable, and this is little x representing some specific value. This little x and this little x are the same. Uh, and that is the sum over um, x prime equals zero to the value of x of the probability of x, x prime. And we plotted it like so. So, um, Probability of being less than zero is obviously zero. Um, between zero and one, the probability of being anything less than zero and uh, anything less than a real number between zero and one is obviously the probability of zero, and that is zero point seven. The pro 
probability of any real number between, or of being less than any real number between 1 and 2 is uh, the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1. That's 0 0.9. And finally, the probability of being less than some real number larger than 2 is the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2. Since those are the only three options, that must be 1. So we can plot the CDF. And what we determined was uh, we can form a code by taking these vertical intervals, taking their halfway point, calling that f bar of x. So that's f bar of 0, f bar of 1, f bar of 2. And then taking the code word we would form is by taking f bar of 0. And remember this notation, floor with a subscript uh, is the number of binary digits in the representation of that number. So the number of bits we took was L of 0, where L of 0 was equal to um, ceiling 1 over probability, of, excuse me, ceiling log 1 over probability of 0 plus 2. So um, we, we explained exactly how all of this worked last time. Um, what's interesting is that um, Ceiling log 1 over p0 is the optimal number of bits in, this repre in, uh, in the representation. Uh, excuse me, for an optimal code, uh, ceiling log 1 over p0 is the optimal code length. So plus 2, we accept a 2 bit penalty, but what the 2 bit penalty bought us was that we were guaranteed that it's a prefix code. Um, and we can basically, once we know f bar, we can directly specify what the code word is without going through any larger procedure. Yes? I'm sorry for interruption. Was that uh, plus one or plus two? This one is plus yeah. two. Oh, wait, no. In the error, error it was plus two. In, in the notes, the error was plus two. That's correct. The number of bits we take is plus one. That's right. So my apologies. It's a two bit penalty because when I include the ceiling, um, the maximum number of bits that I can exceed this is 2. That's correct, sorry about that. So basically what I, if I know f bar, uh, excuse me, if I know f, the function f, I can easily get f bar without, without knowing anything about any other code letter. I can get f bar. And using f bar, if I know the probability, which is just the length of this interval, then I can then I can figure out the number of bits that I that I need of the binary representation. Finding that binary representation is fairly trivial. So, um, without having an enormous procedure such as in the uh, the Huffman procedure over um, some enormous extended um, source, uh, what we can do is we can directly go to F bar and find find the, the code word without necessarily knowing any of the other code words. So the complexity of uh, this kind of coding scheme is relatively low and is practical for extended codes. So arithmetic codes are, in fact, that extension. So when I, when I take a Shannon Fano Elias code over an extended source, basically that's what an arithmetic code is. 